Hey everyone and welcome back to F1 Manager 22. Our Ferrari safe. We're doing very well as opposed to Ferrari in real life. Of course, uh, this has been one day after the Spa Grand Prix. Where of course Ferrari managed to find some new ways to disappoint its drivers. And uh, us as fans. Uh, I'm not even a Ferrari fan per se. I just kind of like the team. I'm Dutch, so I'm supposed to like Red Bull anyway more, but it would be nice to just see them at least be competitive and like give Red Bull a run for their money. Like now we're just going to get a very boring end of the season, which isn't very fun for anyone. Um, but yeah, uh, basically here we're 33 points clear already after three races, so we're doing pretty well, I'd say, in this season so far. Um, Charles is in first and Carlos in second. Um, so definitely not doing too badly here. And uh, now we've got Imola coming up. Uh, the Italian Grand Prix. The Autodromo Internazionale Enzo Edino Ferrari. AKA Imola, I think. I um, don't know where it says that, but pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, but yeah, basically looking like a pretty standard race. 63 laps. Uh rather quick laps which is also of course where there's more of them we get the usual tire setup as always and uh yeah should be pretty good previously uh max won it in 2021 lewis in 2020 um not bad looking like softs can actually last for quite a while uh and they also oh, they're they're slower softs are slower than mediums and they also drop off less quick. Why would we ever go on softs then? That seems counterintuitive. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks like the expected strategy again is then just going to be something like medium hard. If the soft is slower, there's no reason to do hard to soft. But I think we would just use our mediums for 26 laps or so. And then we'll switch to hearts. Um, I don't know why you would already go in so early. Definitely not around 23, 29 at the latest indeed, but m maybe 28 or something we'd probably go in. Uh, definitely not going to do a two-stopper, that's rather dumb, I'd say. Um, if we do 28 plus 35 or so on the hards, what do we get to? We need a little, yeah, we get to around 63, so that's pretty good. All right, looking good. Um, let's have a look then at our inbox as usual. FIA regulations, yes, we saw this last time. Uh, we apparently got some regulation proposals. Minor technical changes. As you know, we may change the regulations that define Formula 1's rules between seasons to make the sport fairer for competitors and more engaging for fans. Uh, proposing new minor technical regulations for the 2023 season. Blah, blah, blah. blah. It will reduce all the team's design expertise regarding the effect of car parts. This will impact all teams regardless of their car strength or weaknesses. So please vote with consideration to the fairness and future of Formula 1 as a whole. Um, minor technical regulation changes will reduce all teams' design expertise regarding the effect of car parts. I think we'd vote against. Like, we have pretty good... Oh, okay. You could scroll. Fair enough. Um, oh, okay. So it's either minor or we have to go for moderate. Fair enough. So we definitely don't want to do moderate. Um, because then we would lose... Like, we're one of the most knowledgeable teams, I'd say. In terms of... Well, our car is the best right now. So I think we would just go for minimal, for sure. Let's hope that that goes through. Uh, yeah, last race, obviously, as a quick recap, Charles Leclerc claimed the checker flag, uh, and I think behind that came Max and then Carlos. Um, no, uh, we got a 1-2, actually, I remember now. Carlos uh, followed in P2, and then Max got P3. Um, so despite a pretty big mistake from Carlos, he still managed to do quite well. Um, so that was really good. Albert Park was claimed by us now what do we have coming up we did just vote so that's done uh there's some manufacturing to be done still in three days uh, we should get our new side pods 
We should also get our new weather center, so that will uh, slightly upgrade our capability of predicting rain. Um, chassis should be done in four days, so both these parts should be done for uh, the Italian Grand Prix, which is nice. And then in one week, we'll also open the research period, so that should be interesting. I uh, don't think we're going to upgrade any facilities right now. We're still upgrading three. Um, right now, we already spent quite a bit. We do have 22 million and we're quite still far under the cost cap of 108 million. Maybe we do change something already. Um, we could upgrade our simulator. That could be quite nice. Cost 10 million. Definitely upgrade uh, or requires a lot more monthly upkeep than two. But we do double the effects of our per unit testing. We could also go for better design center but i feel like we're doing pretty well in terms of yeah this is kind of fine i feel could also go for better brake cooling don't particularly care for that but it does seem to just be like a flat upgrade so if we do the car park test center we get Better engine cooling on our side pots and chassis and front wing on the brake cooling. Suspension is only brake cooling. And yeah, that's the similar. So it doesn't... Well, does this cost more? This is 8 million. Suspension is 10 million. Am I missing something? Why would you pick the suspension over the car part test? Because it seems like you just... Hmm. Maybe the suspension is more important than all of these combined. Uh, we do struggle with engine cooling, so I don't mind this actually. Let's let's spend eight million. Uh, that brings us right down to fourteen. I think that's a very safe number, and we're still very much within the um, the cost cap for this season. So that's perfectly fine, I'd say. Uh, weather center upgraded. Manufacturing complete on the side pods. All right, perfect. So that is two big milestones. Side pods are quite a bit better, actually. So that should be very nice to put on the car. We have two in the warehouse now. And then we have the weather system. Uh, yeah, that went from 60 to 70%. Do we want to upgrade it still one more time to go to 80? It costs 2 million. Uh, I'm a bit wary because I don't know how the projected cost cap factors in, for example, a car that we would... I, uh, uh, car part development cost 25 million. That might have been the car at the start of the season. So I guess that's already factored in in our cost cap. So we don't need to worry about that near the end of the season, I'm assuming. I don't know how much... Um, Research is going to cost us, so maybe we wait for a little bit with upgrading anything else. Uh, let's have a look then at our car setup. Uh, so we built some side pods. Uh, let's have a look what those do. So those bring us from acceleration from third to first, and from engine cooling from fifth to third. So that's very nice. Um, I'd say we definitely do that. So let's put them on both our cars. Um, that's okay for now. We could make a few more just in case we crash. But so far we've been pretty lucky in not crashing, to be honest. Um, could make a few more, but... Quite content, to be honest, keeping them like this for now. Um, don't really need anything else manufactured right now, at least. Could build another suspension but this one was such a small difference to be honest this is the suspension we already got for free sort of i don't particularly care for that i think we'll wait let's see uh we have some designs coming up i think oh uh, yeah the rear wing in 11 day well that's 11 days that's gonna be a while actually we do make some more side but we could make two more because they do seem to be quite a lot better and it costs us... Well, let's make one more. Because then we'll have three days left over. Where we don't... Um, 
use our engineers. But then by the time the designs are complete, we'll... Oh, we could use these as well. Well, that's okay. Maybe we make another chassis once that one is done as well. Let's see. All right. Keep on going. Yeah, there comes the chassis. Um, let's have a look how that one is doing. Yeah, so our suspension and our side pods are on low stock. We knew that already going in. That's perfectly fine. Um, so this chassis, we already had one for Leclerc. Now we also have one for Carlos. That's very nice. Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, I think we do want maybe some spares, though. So... This is also going to take 8 days and then 16 days. That's okay. Let's start building those. And we'll still have 5 of our engineers ready for when the first... Um, the first manufacturing is complete. So that's okay. Or the first design is complete at some point. Alright. Very nice. Let's have a look. Um, I got a few scout reports and something else, I think. First of all, let's see. Car part research is now unlocked. Uh, now that the technical regulations voting is complete, we know that our parameters are for car development next year. We should start car part research for the next season as soon as possible. Doing research for next season will give our team an expertise boost that will help with any expertise lost from new regulations. Okay, so the earlier we start, the better. Basically, what Haas did last season was like, they didn't give a single crap about the current year, didn't develop their current car at all, but they focused only on the new regulations, which were really severe, of course, not like minor, like we just voted for. Um, and actually, this season, they're pretty good because of that. Um, okay. But we don't have any design or research slots available. Okay. Um, all right. So we can only do three, four projects at the same time right now. Well, we can do one more manufacturer at least. Okay, so design and research share a slot. Could have seen that beforehand. Okay, that's good to know. Um, anyway, we're using this season to learn, right? So that's all good. Um, what do we know about our two scouted guys? So first of all, we have Lando. We get some detailed information on him. So uh, he's uh, very much open to negotiation. Uh, we have a detailed level on him. So we can see his performance. Has some pretty good stats, except his defending isn't so good. Um, but everything else looks pretty solid, especially his control, 95. Uh, then we have his contract right now. So he has a four-year contract remaining. A salary of about 10 million per year. Um, and a buyout fee of 18 million. So that's, I guess, what we would need to pay if we wanted to get him. Um, and then we just see his career. That's okay. Then I think we had another scout report. Yeah, on first whore. Let's have a look at him. Uh, if we ever needed, let's say, a, a backup driver or something like that, we could use him. Pretty decent stat, but his reactions especially are very not good. Uh, well, it's a salary I would be very happy to have, but probably not what an F2 driver aspires to have, or he would want more once he goes to F1, of course. But, um, yeah. Interesting. All right. Uh, then we also have... Our scouting leads has been looking for upcoming talent. And Theo Porcher is standing out as having lots of potential. All right. Well, thanks for letting us know. Uh, and then the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Um, yeah, nothing much here. This is just the usual stuff. And then the FIA regulations. Um, Looks like most people voted for this. Actually, Red Bull and Mercedes voted against. Why would they want moderate? Okay, maybe I'm not understanding why then. Because it looks like all the worst teams basically voted for. And then two of the top teams voted against. But uh, I think I'd much rather have minus 5% than minus 10%. But maybe I'm reading into that wrong. Who knows? Uh, we could scout some more people. I think we're still going to scout some staff. So uh, we're already scouting Bono. Let's see if we can scout Musconi, also from Mercedes. 
Uh, let's get a detailed scout report from him. And, um, well, apart from that, there isn't really an upgrade on our race engineer. So let's see. Do we have someone? Uh, we were quite happy with our head of aerodynamics. And then there's only a technical chief that could potentially be an upgrade. And that would be the Red Bull Pierre Avache. Uh, so let's also scout him. Let's see if we can get uh, anything going. All right. If only I could find our strategists, I would fire them in a heartbeat, no matter their, uh, <laughs> no matter what their scores were. All right, we finished some more side pods. Very good. That gives us a bit of spare backup parts in case we uh, we need them. Um, yeah, nice. If a car fails or if we explode or something, then at least we'll have one side pod for uh, Charles, I suppose. All right, then. Let's get into race prep. Performance targets, first of all, we're as always gonna say that we're gonna get second and reach Q3. Race target, fastest lap, I don't mind trying to get that again. And we're doing this proper qualifying and position streak. This is going pretty well, so I think we'll get a decent chunk of money as long as we don't mess up near the end here. Um, all right, very good. Let's get into race weekend then. The hills of Tuscany are green to the south, but here in Imola, the air is red hot. Welcome to Ferrari's turf for the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix. The track has been around since the 60s, but the first official Formula One race was held here in 1980. Let's see what excitement lies ahead this year. This is Imola, and it's an old school track with plenty of elevation changes and lots of corners. There's only one DRS zone here, but it follows the long straight right before Tamburello and should see plenty of action. At this early stage in the season, there are still plenty of opportunities for things to change. In this sport, there simply are no guarantees. Okay then, let's get to it. All right. So, our home race. Um, hopefully we can do better than uh, Ferrari did in real life here. Uh, as of course, uh, Sainz had a did not finish. Let me look that up. What happened to Charles? He got sixth here in Imola. So let's see if we can do a bit better. Uh, that would be nice. Um, yeah, this is our home race, of course. Let's uh, make sure we make the Tifosi proud. Um, what are we going to do? Since we're again not going to use softs, we're going to just roll through those like no other um let's get a decent setup going let's try something like that i think uh, i do want everything to be a bit near the corners of course as usual just so we can uh, hopefully um so we can make sure that everything gets tested as quick as possible i prefer again to simulate p3 just because yeah, otherwise the videos take insanely long. Um, and I think at that point we should normally already have a run that we're quite... Or a setup that we're quite confident in. Um, let's do something like that. Yeah, let's see if this works. Alright. Um, yeah, let's send our guys out. And go for a practice session. As always, I'm not simulating uh, the first session because I want to get the run out. And then we'll Ready give them... Uh, Video check. check. We'll give him a run um, at P3 probably by simulating. I think that's fine. Uh, we're doing 15 laps just like we did before and uh, let's follow Charles around the track for one lap like we do usually just because uh, just to bring everyone's mind back into uh, what this track looks like. It's a rather quick track. I think uh, one lap takes about a minute and 20 seconds. And of course, you can do it a lot quicker, but this is our outlap. So, here we go. First, rather sharp corner, right to switch back. Here, a nice little straight, probably the longest straight, proper straight on the track. And into another quick switch back. And finally, here, go around a sharp, sharp turn. A little bit of elevation, we go up and back into a corner. 
left hand there. And here's going to be a rather sharp turn. I think this is where Carlos went and spun out in the real Imola Grand Prix. I don't remember exactly. I think there was like a lot of wind that day. I think even Max also spun out. But I might be misremembering the track. All right. Let me go pick up a lot more speed again. Near the end here. And then we have two sharp left-handers. There's one. And here comes number two. And then we go on to the main semi-straight again. And across the line. All right. That is that. Let's now, uh, again, speed things up a little bit, because it is, after all, just practice. Let's have our guys get some intel and uh, see what we can do. Uh, apparently, there is some more things that we can do. Uh, okay, there, here's the team commands. Yeah, some of you in the comments did tell me that there is actually team commands. Last episode, I was wondering. Uh, so we have to click on the driver themselves. And we could say, hold back cars behind or don't find teammate. Uh, which would have been really useful when we're like stuck in the air trains or something like that. So that is very nice. You see the telemetry here and the timings. Um, very nice. All right. We're selling some pretty decent lap times right now. Uh, quicker than the Red Bulls. Best things stand. That's not bad at all. Zoo ran wide. Don't need to watch all of that. Uh, looks like our ERS system is still in pretty good shape. The engine and especially the gearbox run wide again okay uh especially the gearbox could definitely um use some work eventually but we're only Update in oh, when okay that's already a good set of confidence very nice i think we should be satisfied with uh, the step we've done at least here very nice um then i Copy. think we're just gonna get you in just come in then we have the setup um and let's reconfigure Alright, so the braking stability definitely needs some work, and we also know where the oversteer needs to go to. That should make for a rather easy fix, as long as I can figure out which slider to use here. Uh, okay, first of all, definitely the braking stability needs to go, like, way that way. Um, and then probably also put you something like this. And then I just want the... I just want the traction and the straights to go a bit back to where they were. That seems to be tough, though. Get done. Um, yeah, this is annoying. Mm -hmm. Try something like this. I don't really like how much the straights move, though. Try something like this. I know we're going a little bit further away with the straights, but we should have moved quite well on braking stability, hopefully. And uh, let's see. Let's do another 15 laps. Uh, apparently, we didn't use up so much of our tires. We could just use them for a bit longer, I suppose. Okay. Well, we might as well, though. Do another 15 laps and send them out. Uh, Carlos. Did you get uh, great, bad, great, great, good? Okay, so only the braking stability really needs some work, and I'm guessing it has to go to the left. Now, is there anything that's gonna give me what I want? Which is yes. There you go. Right, so let's try something like that. And I know that again messes up the cornering a bit, but well, it is what it is. Uh, we have a lot of tire life left so let's also just use the same set of tires the less we use the more we can use during qualifying which is of course what we want and so far our times are actually really good so that's not bad at all and Jout, go have fun and you as well um yeah i mean honestly if we get some pretty good uh, test runs here we might just also skip p2 Especially not really caring that much about the softs and we can always tell them to go once on hards to start off then the, hopefully they shouldn't use so much of the softs um, 
And we could even tell them maybe to to push less on the soft. But it would just be nice if you could set some instructions while you're simulating. Like, hey, use a maximum of two soft or something this stint. Or, or during this session. But I haven't found that yet. Maybe it does exist, but... Doesn't matter so much right now, anyway. Um, getting some pretty good part knowledge. Uh, every time we set up some new parts, I think this number goes down a bit again. Of course, the drivers need to... Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we're now under 30%. I think we're going to keep them out for a little while longer. What do we do? I know, I know. You'll be fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Hey, copy. I would just like to get to tier Can five, you try something with the tires? if possible. But as soon as the as they go to medium, we'll probably call them in, which is now. Oh, no. uh, call car in, please. Yes, come in. And you are also already heading to garage, so this is perfectly. All right, um, so, okay, we went now from this one bad to good, but now this one is bad, and I don't remember where it was. Um, can I not see the previous setup? That's unfortunate. Hmm, okay. Well then. Um, yeah, doesn't matter so much. I think the AI anyway will start to fix a little bit of our setups once we go out again. So I think this is okay. Um, let's send them out on some, I guess, a medium. Go out for a bit and for you. We didn't find out what the braking stability did, so... We'll do the same, just send you out on a medium and we'll we'll set up on that same medium and just let them simulate P2, I think, because I'm quite happy at the at the amounts already. I guess we could go a little bit higher probably, but okay. oh, I mean Carlos even loves it, so yeah, good. Good job. I don't think we need to do too much there anymore. Okay. And anyway, by simulating it seems like we always get a little bit extra anyway. So I don't mind that at all. Alright. Just go another eight minutes. Yeah, I, I just really feel like at least pra I get why you wouldn't have a times 32 in qualifying or during the race, but for practice, it really does feel like a times 32 would just come in really handy. Because um, now we're just watching numbers and names go round and around, and that doesn't do too much for anyone, I imagine. Um, it's okay, it's not a big deal, but I think the game would be better for it. If it did have that. Um, okay. Attention and tires were getting slightly warm while you were conserving. That's interesting. We'll have to keep an eye out on that during the race. Alright, so some pretty good setups. We already got quite a lot of performance bonuses done as well. That's not bad at all. Then let's keep on going. Um yeah, like I said, we're probably gonna tell them to go on the same set of mediums for now. Oh, we have to return those. Um, hmm. Problem is, if we... Yeah, okay. Well, I'm just gonna let them go for once. We shouldn't need much more, so we're gonna tell them to start maybe on the mediums again. I don't like it, though. Maybe... Uh. I don't know. Maybe we just start on softs, let them uh, do their thing. And we'll tell them again to just relax a little bit. Um, go on a run plan of... Let's go a little bit longer. As these tires apparently should last for quite a while. That'd be two laps. That wasn't part of the uh, briefing, I feel, but okay. So let's send them out for 26, maybe. See what that does. Um, and hopefully then they don't use up too many of our softs, because that would be unfortunate. Alright, 
Let's simulate this session. There we go. And uh, we got some pretty good times. So what did we get here? Um, setup confidence is sort of what it was at, I feel. Um, yeah, apparently Charles isn't getting very climatized to the track, but... We'll be kicking That's off okay. today with the final practice before moving on to the qualifying session. Yes. Yesterday's action gave us a fantastic taste of what is to come, and the anticipation within the paddock continues to grow. Qualifying promises to be as unrelenting as ever. Only the best, the most consistent drivers can progress from one period to the next and stand a chance of earning a place at the front of the grid. Uh -huh. Let the competition commence. All right. Nice. Get going. Beautiful infographics as well. Oh, Sunday might have heavy rain. Very interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah, I feel like they're gonna cost us some softs again, but I think it's okay. Maybe we'll use a medium during uh, Q2 or Q3. Um, so let's do the same idea. We'll just do 26 laps again on those softs. Tell them to relax a little bit, and there you go. Hopefully, they don't use up too much of our tires. Um, let's simulate. All right. Uh, again, decent times. We did get split, though. Carlos didn't have such a good... All right, that's 100% track acclimatization. Pretty good setup confidence, so all in all, definitely not too bad. Let's get into qualifying. Um, how many of, yeah, okay, so we have three sets left. Three and then the race one. Okay, good. We did use up one of our hearts. That's fine. Shouldn't really do much. Uh, as always, let's set up one flying lap. And I think we'll start... Well, we have a lot of soft. Let's just start on the soft. Um, let's start the qualifying. Um... I'm curious what's going to happen if I simulate Q1. We've never done that before. I don't want to make it a habit, but I do want to see what happens. So let's simulate for once. Um, so we did obviously just qualify. Fine. Um, okay, and they ended up using sort of two softs at their freshest, which is a little annoying. Not really what we want, but we'll, we'll end up just using the same softs. I think that should be fine anyway, and then we'll actually play qualifying two. So it's, a, it's a, yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate that they end up using multiple sets. And radio check when you can. You'd feel like if... Radio check, okay. If you already set a good time, like, why go out again and ruin another set of tires, right? I mean, it is very on-brand for, uh, for Ferrari, apparently. It's what they did in, uh, in the race yesterday during quali- or, sorry, in qualifying, uh, this weekend. But, you'd think that at least the AI would be a bit smarter. Um, alright, we're rounding the corner here, so let's start pushing. Of course, go deploy. Push. Oh, sorry, you're not around the corner yet, so let's not push you yet. Um, there you go. Now we can push you. Pack, push, and deploy. Alright, let's see what they can do. Let's put up the, uh, the timings. As we go across the finish line. And we're gonna go set some new lap times. Minor underfloor damage. Ooh. Okay. See what that does to the uh, to the lap, but that's not what we want, of course. Uh, we are stuck in a little bit of traffic here, but we are setting also a purple. Okay, so that wasn't a great lap. I think Leclerc We've got stuck in a little a bit of traffic, and then obviously Sainz had that underfloor damage. That's not what we want. Uh, let's. Purple again, of course. Don't use up everything that we have. Um, yeah, okay, so that wasn't ideal. Let's see what that damage did to our car, and uh, if we need to get out again. 
I feel like we should be pretty safe with Charles, but... Hmm. Alright, so first of all, we had the underfloor with minor damage. Now, what would that do? Ooh. It's gonna take <laughs> over 966 seconds to fix. Boom. That's probably the hardest thing. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Your underfloor would be the hardest thing to replace. And it is minor damage, right? So how much would that do in terms of lap times? Hmm. I mean, can we even... Which is 966 seconds? Like what? Like nine minutes? I'm way off. It's like 16 minutes. Eesh. Um Okay, so we can't fix it before the Q3 starts. I'm just not sure if, if we fix it now, at least we wouldn't go into Q3 with the damaged underfloor. Um, but I think we're not going to try and replace it because it just takes way too long. Um... I think we'll end up using the second set for Carlos and just have him go again. And I think Leclerc is fine. I don't think we need to do much for him. But let's run out science again. And Leclerc, we're just going to let him chill. Uh, I don't think he needs to go at all. Um, let's wait for a little bit with Carlos. Let him get sort of a free track. Uh, oh, Gasly is up here. Okay, that makes me a little bit worried. So maybe we actually let... Charles go again as well. Um, doesn't look like it's gonna rain or anything, so I think we'll go. Let everyone come in for a little bit, and I think we send them out now. Don't want to be part of that whole rain again. We'll just go automatic mode. That's okay. Let's see. If we get out and. Head of the train just about like we wanted. Perfect. And okay, that's some lot better times. Yeah, I just didn't want to be in this little weird train where we might have gotten damage. It doesn't seem like the underfloor did much to Carlos. He is a bit slower than Charles, but that could just be that he drove a worse lap, right? So obviously okay. if we can we'll fix it before the race, but and Q3 if we are allowed to, but doesn't seem like it has the largest impact, so that's not bad. Um, Alright, so. What do we do for Q3? We start on a fresh set of softs and we get another set if we really need it. Uh, car setup is pretty good. Car parts are good. Um, now, I do think we want the underfloor to be... Mm, can't I take it off or, like, repair it? Apparently, I can't. Oh, adjustments are locked. Well, that makes sense. Um, so we're not allowed to change it anymore. That was a bit of a mistake. Then maybe I should have tried to do it during the qualifying. But I, I feel like there was a really real chance that science wouldn't get out of Q2. Because a lot of people were putting on better times than us. So I guess we're just going to have to run with the damaged underfloor then. Because um, I don't see a way to to somehow get this part. Um, yeah, and adjustments are locked, so... Okay, well then we're just gonna have to run with what we're running with. Uh, we'll get you a fresh set of... tires, and let's manage Q3. And radio check, I think we're just gonna go out immediately. Radio check, okay. Don't want any rain to ruin us here. It doesn't look like it would, but just to be sure. And uh, I think we can go automatic mode, that's okay. Alright, hopefully we can get out ahead of lots of traffic. Uh, we just got past the Red Bulls, which is good. And that is pretty decent times. I'd say that's, I think, close to the record. Yeah, that's, those are really good times. Alright, um, are we going to go out again? At the very least, we're going to wait till the end and just sort of try and be part of that DRS train again. Or not DRS, but like that train again. Um, so let's go... Let's try and be first, let's say. Or like, yeah, okay, right now. Um, I think we're just gonna go... 
on the same set of tires. That seems okay by me. And same for you, same set of tires. I would like to keep a completely fresh set if possible. And now we're just going to go into train. And let's see what that does. We do seem to have some... Uh, some space to our competitors, so that's fine. Charles selling purples across the board. I don't think he improved in the end, but... Everything went really quick there all of a sudden, a lot quicker than I anticipated. Uh, but it looks like we got a 1-2, even with a damaged underfloor, so that is very nice. Uh, now since we do have we that are, damaged underfloor... For another day of scintillating yes, F1 action. Um, it's race day. Yeah. These past few days, I do think we're gonna Ferrari tell to Carlos not to attack Charles if possible. Bad. Now let's see if they can make the Tifosi proud by capitalizing on that great position. This weekend, Red Bull displayed real promise during qualifying. But I feel like they, they say the same thing every time, to be honest. It's always like, oh, Ferrari did great, Red Bull showed promise. Alright, um, right, let's have a look then at the... Right. We see the weather somewhere here already? Doesn't look like it's here. Um... It just says heavy rain, so I guess we'll find out during the race. Or, I mean, here. Um, yeah, okay, so there's definitely going to be rain. Um, question is, how much will it be? So... Hmm. What if we go to, like, either wets or inters? And they can last for ages, which is good. Uh, but probably we're already going to have to go to intermediates really soon. Hmm. All right, so I think we save our set. Uh, no. Because mediums were actually slower than soft, right? So we could use our first set of soft uh, till the rain starts. Or medium, sorry. So we'll definitely start on mediums. We'll just go hard on them. Um, and then we'll use that set of softs way near the end, the fresh one, if the rain even dries up quick enough. If it doesn't, then we'll end up either being on inters or wets. Now, we've never played with these before, so I have no clue how this is going to go. But I think for now, we're going to assume, since it says heavy rain, that we're going to need to do wets. And we'll probably have to already do it, like, right around here. Um, and obviously, I don't know if that's going to be true. Looks like we can even really go hard on these tires, but I think for now this is okay. Our estimated race time says now like 1.39. Um, but that's just because we picked uh, wets instead of hards. But let's see. I mean, I have no clue if this is actually going to be what's good, but I think that's a fine strategy to assume for now. Let's update this one as well. Um, we'll go for the wet. We'll already go around lap 11, 12 or so. We'll really go hard on these tires. And this will be the strategy for now. Obviously, we can just change it as needed. But I do like starting on the mediums as we would be rather quick. And uh, it doesn't seem like it will rain at the start already. Um, obviously, we're going to start as hard as we can. On deploy. Just to uh, make sure that we have the goodest start as we can. And uh, let's get to racing. I don't want to tempt fate, but there are quite a few clouds overhead yes. as we look at the lineup on the grid. Well, this time it seems that it, I think that and weather forecast might have come in Leclerc. just at a perfect time. <laughs> Let's see we have 70% instead of because 60. Position. And further back, there's Sainz. They're in second place on the grid, but that oh. could... Yeah, that's fine. All Let's eyes start. are on the race <laughs> here at the Amelia Romagna Grand Prix. And it's lights out, uh, and away so we go. So I would actually like to watch, uh, I think, Carlos, and then from the front here, and just see how he does compared to the Red Bulls next to him. Seems like we got off to a great start here. I do want to immediately tell since I don't want any shenanigans this time. Um, well, do we? 
actually not too bad to just have him fight for now. But as soon as uh, the arrest goes open, then we stop fighting. Um, because then it becomes too easy and we just start playing this sort of stupid game. Um, and I don't want that. But it does look like we're already getting away from the Red Bulls rather well. Um, I think we're going to tell Signs to ease up on his ERS. Just keep it in case he needs to uh, defend against Max. Um, and right now he's still in DRS range so he can sort of get like pulled along if need be. Not too bad. And let's turn off our ERS for now. We're already almost outside of the ERS range, so the Ferrari really is a beast. Uh, Hamilton actually managed to make up spot to Perez. Russell right behind them. And Alonso, Bottas, Ocon, Gasly. Of course, the two Williams at the end. Aston Martin there. Haas doing his thing. Alright. Um, I don't mind just really heating up these tires. I do mind using up too much fuel. So let's stop doing that. And we'll need uh, lift off. And I think this is also where we're going to okay. tell Carlos here to not uh, fight. Um, now he could be quicker, but he has that damage on the floor, so I don't want to tempt fate. Um, so let's ease up a little bit. Um, I, I still don't mind being at, on attack down. here, just because... Okay. As long as the wheels don't heat up too much, which... Yes, they're a little too warm, but not like critically so. And we do have pretty good cooling at this rate, so uh, maybe we do have to go back a little bit. Let's just go to aggressive. Let's go down now. Um, I don't want to crash out or anything, and we are very much outside of uh, range of the Red Bulls right now, which is, of course, great. Um, now, the first lap, so we could start seeing some rain, is around lap 11 to 12. Let's keep an eye on that. Um, and then we're going to have to decide very quickly whether we actually go for those mediums or for the wets. I really don't know. DRS is now enabled. DRS enabled. DRS enabled. Yep. Uh, we did already tell him to not fight. So let's hope he sticks to that. Uh, he is rather quick. Really rather have you don't fight your teammate here. Does seem like he's actually sticking to team orders. That is good. We are outside of Verstappen's DRS, so that's also pretty good here. All right, yeah, I think it's I think it's working. Um, and basically, the easy part now also is that sign should be yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I think the best part of this is that now science is getting pulled along. That should save him lots of fuel that we can use later down in the stint. Um, so I think I've talked about this in the comments a bit, and I don't really understand what is creating these gaps for the Delta. I think it's because uh, Leclerc is now in front, right? He's catching the most like wind, whereas uh, Science can actually use his DRS to just stick with Leclerc more easily, and he can use that excess fuel by just not using it. Um, so I guess this shows that we would, like, if we stayed exactly like this, we would end up with a surplus of, like, 10, 10 laps of fuel. Just because we're sticking behind Leclerc. Um, so I guess that's what it is. Um, and that's also why Leclerc right now, I think, is at a deficit. And I'm not sure this is the truth, but it does seem to be that the person that's behind someone and using DRS is actually the one getting these, like, additional fuel laps. Um, but this seems to go pretty well. And now we can use this additional fuel, of course. There is some rain coming. Okay, now is when we start seeing rain, apparently. Um, so let's see that what that actually looks like. Not really seeing rain yet. It does look pretty sunny still. Um, all right, all right, all right. Uh, still looking like dry and dry. And then in eight minutes, heavy rainfall. Heavy rainfall to me means um, a very good lap. wet. So between one and four millimeters of rain, we need to be on inters. Plus four millimeters of rain, we should be on um, wet. So it still feels like to me that we're going to do wets, but it's of course not guaranteed. We'll have to see. Uh, right now, there is just zero. So... Let's go for a little while and see. Once it starts raining, we'll have a look again. We'll reevaluate. 
Uh, it does seem like we're saving quite a bit of fuel, so that will be nice once we start pitting. And uh, maybe Sainz can even go ahead of Leclerc. I mean, we're kind of just pulling him along now. Um, so Leclerc is actually the guy using up most of his resources. Wet weather predicted. Let's see. What is happening here? Yeah, okay, so now we're some definitely rain. starting to see some rain. Now. Sun seems to be Copy. half gone, and uh, yeah, it's getting a bit wet. But let's see, right now, climbing pretty quickly here. Um, so, where are we? We're definitely going to just have to do this lap, so we can keep watching the rain forecast and see, but maybe we're even going to go in quicker than we were thinking, because... Yeah, tires are overheating a bit, that's perfectly fine. Um, track is now damp. It's one millimeter of rain, so that's inter-territory still. Mm. I feel like this is not yet the time to go in. So Albon has already made that decision. He's going in for the pits. We could have a look at him and see how well he's going to get on. Uh, he's already going for wet. I think we're too close for a double stack, so either way we're going to have to pit one of our guys first. And I think that guy has to be... Oh, I'm not sure actually. Who is that guy going to be? Huh. Uh, so our pit entry lane is in 200 meters, so we're definitely going to have to make a choice now. Uh, right now, basically. Um, we're at 118. It's only going to get worse. So we could go to inters for like... Let's say 10 laps if we feel like it's not going to rain more. Um, Rick water. It seems to like only ramp up like around here. From here on, we definitely just want to be on wets, I feel. And then go out on wets till the end of the race if our forecast is correct. Uh, it's a shame we can't really see what this actually means, this level. Can I click anywhere? No. So we don't know what this is. Like right now here it says zero, but we're obviously already on more track water on one millimeter, which is where these uh, inter start getting better. Um, we do save ourselves 25 seconds by only pitting once. And I do feel like we could probably, if we go to pit now, could we, could we last till the end of the race? 99 <laughs> okay so we could probably last till the end of the race as long as we as long as the track stays wet enough which it does seem to be and we did have the upgraded weather forecast center problem is just right here it's probably not that great so we could go for like 11 laps or so on inters and then go on the wet we could also decide to say well screw it we're just gonna stay on mediums for a while and then go to wet either way i think we have to bring in one of our guys now if we're gonna do it there's only gonna be more more heavy rainfall so i feel like we just bring in one of our guys and i think we're gonna go wet on signs probably um let's do it and pit comfort. So here we're gonna see one of our yeah, Ferrari is coming in. There he goes. Let's see what is Max doing. Yeah, Max is also going into the pit. So Leclerc, okay. meanwhile, he's going to have to absolutely push with everything he has. Um, just to set up like as good as a lap time as he can. He did have a pretty sizable gap to Verstappen. That is pretty good. But he's going to have to push like crazy. Everyone else coming in now too. We can see what everyone else is doing. Um... Looks like everyone is choosing to go on the wets here. Except Fernando. And I am inclined to believe Fernando. <laughs> um, yeah, it seems like everyone went wets. If they came in. Not everyone came in, I think. No, there's definitely people like us that stayed out. Obviously, everyone that had to do a double stack otherwise probably wouldn't have. Looks like everyone chose sort of the same strategy where they brought one of their guys out. Uh, or kept one of their guys out and brought the other one in. Um, we're setting some pretty decent lap times, I think, here. But because of the wet rain, it's probably not going that well. Um, I don't, I didn't see how well our pit stop went. But 
We are still quite ahead of Verstappen, who is now also stuck behind Norris and Schumacher, so that's pretty good for us. Um, meanwhile, we're not really in traffic, I think. No, we are in traffic as well. We're stuck behind Yuki and uh, Carlos. That's fair enough. All right. Um, so Leclerc is soon going to come up on his decision point. Let's start uh, going neutral on the DRS here. Button on. on the Charge ERS. Button on. Sorry. Um, still, the rain hasn't gotten that much more wet. But 10 laps to go. I feel like it's just wet, to be honest. Especially since Max also went still wet. I mean, we're probably quick enough, even if we choose the wrong tire, to still go past Fernando. So, I think we're just going to come in. Or wets. And uh, let's see how that does. Uh, I'm very curious to see. Uh, I do like this a lot. Uh, this sort of uncertainty that you don't know exactly if you're correct about the weather. In Motorsport Manager, right, you know exactly how much rain there's going to be, as long as you can see far enough ahead. Here, it, there's a little bit of uncertainty, which is also there in real life, of course, and it does make it interesting to me. Alright, that's a pretty good pit stop for Charles. Looks like Perez now also coming in, Russell, Ocon, everyone coming in. And uh, Science is going past everyone pretty quickly, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna stop telling you to go too hard on your fuel now. We've been using up a lot. Um, Science, meanwhile, can actually use up a lot because he has too much. Bottas running wide. He's not that great in the rain usually, so that makes sense. Yeah, just lost it. Yeah. I definitely lost some time there. Um, yes. All right. Um, let's see. What has everyone chosen to do? So we didn't lose too much time here. I think we're still sort of equal to Max. Um, everyone else appears to have gone on wets except Fernando, Kmag, Ocon, and Schumacher. Um, so we'll see. We'll see in the next 10 or so laps who is right. I'm very curious. So right now, let's keep an eye on Fernando especially because he's right now in sixth. Uh, and I want to see how much quicker or slower he could be right now. It does appear like Perez is having a stinker. He stayed out too long and it definitely cost him. We kept Leclerc out and it cost him as well, to be fair. I mean, Sainz did go past him. Um, but Max didn't get near enough for us, luckily. So right now, this was actually better for Sainz. So it does appear that going in earlier was definitely better there. Uh, so we screwed up Charles a little bit. We did a Ferrari, basically. Um, it's not great, to be honest, and I'm not too happy about that, but, um, it is what it is. Uh, we did still set him to don't find teammates, so if Charles can get close enough, then we'll let him buy him. Track is now really wet, so, okay, so we already got to the 4 millimeters. I think that means Fernando has chosen poorly, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, it's getting really wet out there. That also means DRS is probably going to get disabled soon. Or if if it hasn't been already. Track rip is really horrible. Uh, we're now just in the wet conditions. Might even see some crashes, especially from the intermediate runners. Um, yeah, Fernando here is coming into the pits. Very glad with the uh, heavy rain thing that we didn't choose to go on intermediates here. Uh, because you see what that's going to lead to. Uh, that's just uh, everyone having to come in immediately again. So I think all of it, yeah. Alonso is doing the same. Uh, Magnussen, probably Ocon is going to come in. I assume. No, Ocon stays out. Okay, interesting. All right, that's definitely going to cost him as well, I'd say. Um, all right. So, yeah, science is increasing his gap a little bit just because we're telling him to use more fuel for now. Um, but that's okay. And, uh, yeah, this is probably gonna be just what we're gonna be looking at for quite a while. Track drying up a little bit now. But we're still very much on a wet track here. Um, so most of the AI chose well, except three drivers. They chose poorly. I bet you could count that down to, like, not knowing exactly what the forecast was gonna be, of course. Uh, track is drying up a little bit now. We do expect more heavy rainfall, 100%. Okay, so I'm assuming 
quick look and the yeah it's still raining pretty heavily so um yeah I'd, i would say this is probably gonna go up again soon enough i'd be surprised if people come in now to go back to inters that would be rather strange um yeah Ocon is in 19th so he definitely didn't choose right i think he might have pitted again as well this one we didn't notice yeah everyone is now in wet so we all chose the same things um all right times mean we're really extending his lead so far i think we're gonna tell him to also now just stay balanced on the fuel let's see what that does for us um in terms of tires how are we looking here and these tires last for ages so i don't think we need to be too careful on them uh that's okay someone spun out oh, ooh, Vettel, no Sebastian, look please. Again, it involves Sebastian Vettel. Oh, that's they so costly. Just that's gave it for spin. free to the... Uh, probably to Alonso and Yuki or something. I would assume. Alright, so Perez is definitely having a stinker so far. He's going to try and get past Bottas. Uh, meanwhile, we have an insane gap already to stop and That's 10 seconds just to Leclerc. Um, so it's pretty much now between Leclerc and Sainz as long as neither of them spins out. But that could definitely happen. So let's not count our... Uh, looking at the rainfall, definitely sticking around oh, four millimeters. Roll went white. What else is new? Um, I would assume it's still gonna get heavier. It does look like it. Drizzling sort of right now, but I'm definitely sticking out on the wets. Yeah, there you go again. Uh, so as soon as like sort of a flash storm happens again, all of a sudden it gets very wet again. Um, so being on the wets here is just way more sensible and now it's getting really really wet multiple carts crashed oh boy that looks like Ocon uh, I don't know who else I don't think it involved us There's been contact as I can tell and several cars involved let's take a look at no the okay so that was okay, probably so stroke there we have the LP. or Vettel Ooh, okay yeah that's not a corner you want to take in these conditions oh no and wow. there's the crash yeah that's Mark that's my words, there'll be questions asked about that later yeah i can imagine oh, oh no <laughs> uh okay so Ocon is gonna get probably a penalty for that yeah so Ocon got a penalty um did look like he was at fault there uh and that was probably stroll who he ran out Tire's getting a little bit warm. Let's start going a bit standard on those then. And same for Charles here. Um, Alright. So I kind of meant to use Carlos as a guinea pig of whether the wets would be good. Um, but it ended up being a lot quicker actually wide. than Leclerc. Oh, even Hamilton running we wide. take a look now. Now watch this. Lewis Hamilton involved in this one. And they've gone wide. Very hey, I wide. mean, that was just... That's not ideal. That was not ideal pretty much the racing line almost. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't and call that, that going wide. I, I don't team. think this this is and a warranted made... reaction. <laughs> the guy's just like, no! <laughs> How dare you, Lewis? What did you do? I mean, you just went a little bit wide. I mean, to be fair, there's like five millimeters of heavy rainfall out on the track. And I don't think you need to chastise him too much for that. Uh, interesting. I think uh, I think this could definitely use some tweak. I really love... Don't get me wrong. I, ooh, gearbox showing a bit of wear. Only minor for now, but that means we should probably think of replacing that for next race. Yeah, it's at 39%. Probably at 30, it starts to get a real problem. Um, so yeah, maybe around next race, we need to start thinking of replacing that gearbox. That is unfortunate, because I don't want to be replacing parts so early in the season. But, well, we don't have a choice. If we at some point have to take some penalties, it is what it is. Uh, it'll make for some interesting racing, at least. I think there's been a lock yeah, this, we're definitely not switching off these wets. Um, it's only going to get wetter. We have a good forecasting center now, so we know what's coming. And uh, so far, we're actually just increasing our leads by the minute. That's really good. Uh, we don't have to use much of our... We don't have to use much of our um, resources either in terms of tire or fuel, so that's pretty good too. I uh, don't need to hold anyone back. Uh, should we tell them to... Go easy on the curbs. I don't think we need to, but yeah, I don't think this matters too much. 
wonder what they do specifically. This would keep your temperature down, maybe? And I don't, I I don't know. Interesting. Right, Bottas running wide. Yeah, he's just not that great in... In the wet, unfortunately for him. Uh, we have barely been using our fire up at all. I think we can go a little bit more aggressive. Let's have both our guys drive their ass off. Um, well, we don't need to actually. We're just so far ahead. And I think if we go aggressive or attack mode, that also increases the risk of crashing, which we definitely don't want. So let's leave it on neutral. Let's just play it safe. We have a lot of space to uh, for stop them. Let's make sure we hopefully don't spin or anything like that. And uh, rain has stopped. Rain. Hmm. Yeah, it could be. Okay, so now it's now we have to really just start looking at this uh, millimeter tracker. How quick is this gonna go off? Is the question. Was that a lockup on the track? And is any of our competitors gonna come in? Because as as long as they don't come in, we don't need to come in, obviously. And we just mimic their strategy. Um, but around the four millimeter mark is when this. When it's gonna really start mattering. So it, it, it does say like we're still gonna get heavy rainfall. Oh no, wait, that's track condition. So this is cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. It could still rain a bit, but probably not. Which is also why we're drying up on the track now. Um, but it looks pretty good. Track is now down. Okay, so from now onwards, it could be better to start going on intermediates. Um, but with how long a pit stop would take, like, let's say, right? If we go pit, and we let's say we put on inters, right? Total pitting time is 28 seconds. That's too long. Uh, we're obviously not going to pit. Um, that's just too long. Um, we only have a 15 second gap to max. Even just with Carlos. So I don't think there is any point. Now if they come into the pits. Obviously we'll mimic it one lap later. Then I really don't mind. But right now it's just. It's fine I think to still be on the. Oh severely Someone's overheating. That makes sense. These wets are not made for this type of rainfall, I think. So we're definitely starting to overheat them a bit. Yeah, this is not good. Now, if the track dries up too much, that's going to be a real concern. But for now, I think we can alleviate it by just being a bit conservative. Um, and we only need to do six more laps. Oh, Leclerc actually went past signs. I didn't even notice that. Why? That's interesting. I guess he has less fuel in his car and he has some fresher tires, so. And we did tell Sainz not to fight his teammates, so. Fair enough. Okay, well, maybe I should have not done that anymore. Um, okay, well. I guess we kind of gifted the win to Leclerc. We, can, we kind of cost him a potential win anyway with the strategy we employed, but I did genuinely mean to make it a fair fight between them uh in terms of like okay i pit science first and then we'll see whatever is better is better you know but uh yeah it turned out science's strategy was just a little better um but yeah uh, i i kind of forgot that i still had the fight don't fight uh, command on <laughs> um all right yeah we're just keeping an eye on for stop and even hamilton though he shouldn't matter so much but Looks like Perez is having a lot of trouble getting past Hamilton, which is kind of funny. Severely overheating still. It's not what we want here. Uh, yeah, the track is just getting way too dry for these wets. Not much we can do about that. Uh, we can tell him to avoid the curbs, I suppose, and maybe drive in clean air. Maybe that will help a little. does seem to help a little bit not much though yeah it's only gonna get worse as this track keeps drying up Verstappen is actually closing the gap because of that though he should also be in trouble with these wets of his i would assume uh not that it matters too much we're now on the last lap so uh let's just use up all our ers we have it all anyway so deployed deployed and let's use also some fuel and yeah let's hope i don't, I don't want to push the tires more i don't want them to pop or anything like that 
But this should be okay. We still have a 10 second gap to first up, and there's no way he should be able to close that in one lap, obviously. Um, so that's okay. All right, and looks like we are going to get a 1-2. Let's watch Leclerc go across the finish. Um, yeah, so kind of iffy with team orders there from my side. Um, I think either one was fine, to be honest. Um, Carlos got the better strategy, but we kind of sacrificed Leclerc because of that. But in the end, we told them to give it back, so uh, all's fair, all, all Zelda when ends well, I suppose. Um, and hey, I'll never complain about a 1-2, right? Uh, I think we chose pretty well. Inters was definitely not the play there with heavy rainfall coming in soon. I think it was a little bit ambiguous because if we really followed the forecasting report to the letter, I think we would have been better off on Inters for 10 laps, but... Um, well, that didn't appear to be the case at all. And it did say heavy rainfall, so I would have assumed, hey, that's probably not the correct play. Um, but, uh, hey, see, Carlos is still happy too. He's not unhappy with what happened there. It would be an interesting addition if the drivers could get, like, angry at you for doing team orders or... Um, well, this was definitely if they'd be, Charles like, Leclerc's salty weekend. that they ended up behind their teammate because of strategy or something like that. I feel like that's hard to measure, obviously, for a game like this. But at least the team orders thing should be pretty easy to somehow do. I don't know, maybe it's part of the game. Maybe at some point we'll get Carlos, like, on podium, bonking exactly on my door. What the team deserved, and they <laughs> okay. got it. Are you having fun there, Charles? <laughs> okay. But, uh, hey, I think we did the Tifosi proud today. Um, yeah, we won. And a 1-2 as well. And again, Max on third. I'm seeing a pattern. Certainly proved his uh, well, he seems but happy, at least. Good for today. you. <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Uh, interesting race. I did really like the rain, and I love that it's a bit unpredictable. Um, we could see it also, remember, right, with Alonso and Ocon and K-Mag. The they all, all the figured difference. like, oh, you know, the intermediates could maybe be better, Ferrari and they obviously be weren't. Disappointed with that result. It's really wonderful to see all the hard work they've been putting in paying off like this. After an intense weekend, the team ends in first place in the constructors. Yeah, okay. We know all that. All right, yeah, so really good result. We didn't get past this lap. Uh, that, in the end, went to Sergio. Um, but, hey, we're never going to complain about a 1-2, right? So, uh, driver's championship looking really good for Charles, who is 12 points clear of Carlos now. Uh, first up, and is sort of just lagging behind. And then in the constructors, yeah, just uh, very one-sided. Uh, McLaren had a pretty good week for a weekend for them. That's plus five points. More than doubled their uh, old point tally. And Haas, Williams and Aston Martin are still all on the zero mark. I'll not subject you too much to my horrible singing. Uh, yeah, we managed to get six million from sponsors there. A lot from uh, performance incentives. That's very nice. We got that finished position streak. That's a cool million. Very nice. All right. Um, yeah, that was fun. And our tour center is now also improved, so that should give us some more money. And we have another design for the rear wing complete. I think a new design period is going to start soon, and we can also start researching next episode now that that slot has opened up. That is all very nice. I think there's a lot of exciting stuff still to do and a lot to learn. Uh, I've already learned a lot from these first four episodes and races. Uh, we've now finally had some experience with a rainy race. Um, I haven't had a major accident yet. That could be interesting. I'd be curious to see what that would do to our car and what we would have to uh, replace. At least the underfloor is now damaged, so we'll definitely replace that. Probably try and make a new one or something. Um, but yeah, doing really well so far. Um, I guess, yeah, Ferrari does have that inherent potential with their great car and great drivers. Just about someone to actually tell them to not pit uh, uh, during the last lap of the race, just to try and win one point on the fastest lap and then lose two. Sorry. All right. Um, I think that's enough. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I very much did. Um, as always, just a quick reminder, there is a Discord server where you can chat with uh, with me or the other watchers. And um, uh, yeah, hope you really liked the episode. We're doing well. See you in the next one. Bye.